Hi, Greg. Hello, Mike. Hi, Andy. Hi, guys. Hi, James. Hi, Carmel. Hi, Caroline. Hi, Helen again. Actually, my screen is building up on the sea of faces. <laughs> Mary Lagon, I was only just speaking about you earlier today with somebody else in Florida. We'll have a, we'll have a catch up about that conversation um, in the next couple of days. I don't know how to write on here while he's, he's doing things, which is a sham. Can everybody uh, just make sure that you've got your microphones muted? Oh, okay, I haven't. Uh... Just, I was doing one of these uh, master classes a while, while ago, and uh, somebody got their dog barking in the background, so that's all anybody could hear. <laughs> Mark Collins, how are you doing? Good, good. good. Yeah, doing great. Thanks, David. Good to see you again. It's been a while. Yeah, good to see you too. Sheila, I haven't seen you there for a long time there in Canada. Okay, so as uh, we're going to be, you know, uh, letting people in as they um, as they arrive, we've got forty seven people in the waiting room. Yeah. Uh, we'll be admin admitting those. Um, so I think we must have hit about 200 so far, something like that. Um, so uh, welcome. This is the uh, the second of the, the sessions in this 10-session uh, uh, masterclass um, on this, um, uh, what I said was a contentious and controversial concept in personal development called perceptionist projection. I hadn't actually realized how contentious it was. Um, I was putting a post up last night to remind people uh, to, that this was happening tonight and, uh, and also to give people a link if they hadn't seen it yet and hadn't registered yet. And when I was putting in my post, as soon as I wrote the word contentious, um, the post box disappeared. Um, and they said uh, something seems to, Facebook said something seems to have gone wrong. So I thought, this is weird. So I, put, I did it again, put contentious in again. And it, again, it, the chat box, uh, the post box disappeared. And it said something's gone wrong. So I thought, maybe it's my, um, uh, my MacBook Pro. So, so I went upstairs onto my, um, onto my iMac and I said, did a post, wrote the word contentious. And again... <laughs> It disappeared and Facebook said something seems to have gone wrong. So then I did uh, another post, didn't put the word contentious in and that was fine. So uh, there we go. That's, uh, that's how contentious this is. And also the reason why we're doing it on Zoom and not a Facebook Live um, so that we can continue to, uh, to stream it and to broadcast it. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we're going to run for about uh, 30 minutes, approximately. Uh, I'm going to take uh, time at the end for some uh, Q&A. So the way that we'll de deal with the Q&A when we get there is uh, if you put in uh, to the chat your um, questions, and then Sally will actually write those questions down for me so that I can read them. Um, and then I'll, um, I'll do my best to answer all of the questions um, that, um, that people are asking. Uh, by the way, uh, for those of you there last week, thanks uh, so much for the amazing feedback. And I'm just delighted um, that, we, that we hit the mark uh, right and that uh, people are getting you know, major, major breakthroughs, major aha moments, because uh, that's, uh, this, that's what this is all about, okay? So <clears throat> let's, take it, um, let's take it up a level uh, compared to um, where we were uh, last week. The first thing I want to talk about is, you know, what is the actual mechanism of projection and therefore the mechanism for perception is projection. So what you can think of is you can think of your nervous system as being like a uh, holographic projector uh, that projects out a hologram around you, uh, which is, you know, what we consider to be our world or the universe that we live in. 
I want to look at the mechanism for projection from two different models. So the first model I want to look at um, is the uh, NLP model, the Neuro Linguistic Programming model, which I know that many of you have uh, trained in NLP. Um, and what we've got in NLP is that um, all of this information, now estimated to be 12 million bits of information per second, comes streaming into our nervous system uh, through our eyes, through our ears, through our sense of touch, smell, taste, etc. And then to be able to handle that huge amount of information, uh, what our nervous system does, and probably also more correctly, what our unconscious mind does, which is running in our nervous system, is it filters that information um, before we then become consciously aware of what we call in NLP, um, our internal representation. And the big thing with this is that, you know, what you're actually experiencing right now isn't the outside world. What you're actually experiencing right now is your internal representation of the outside world. And because we all filter in completely and totally unique ways, then we have the uh, presupposition of NLP that everybody's got their own unique model of the world. And from a perceptionist projection point of view, then our internal representation is the slide in the projector. So what we're doing is we're projecting out into the outside, what appears to be the outside world, our internal representation, which we then become um, uh, consciously aware of in our perceptions. So that's the mechanism by which uh, we could explain how uh, perceptions projection works from a NLP point of view. Now in HUNA, which I also know uh, many of you have uh, studied as well, HUNA being the original um, uh, spiritual teachings of the people of Hawaii, in HUNA they've got a slightly different uh, model, slightly different idea, which was that we carry around inside of us, a part of us, which is everybody that we've ever met, everybody that we've ever um, uh, uh, bumped into, anybody that even we've uh, thought about or anybody that we've actually um, seen in our universe. Now, when they say a part of us that represents that person, that's a different idea than the idea or the notion of parts in NLP. So let me explain what that means from a HUNA point of view. Um, you know, here's an example. Um, my, my dad died in uh, 1986, but I can still go and find the part of me inside that's my dad, and I can have a conversation with him, and he will have, he'll respond and talk to me and communicate with me in exactly the way that he would do if he was actually physically here. Um, I can go inside and find the part of me that's my mum. Uh, my mum is uh, still uh, physically around, although she's, she's 88 now. Uh, and to my knowledge, although this is a complete mind read, uh, she's at home uh, in Nottingham at this point in time, which is around about, what, 150 miles away from uh, where I'm physically now. But if I found the part of me inside that's my mum, she would respond in exactly the way that she would do if she was physically present in um, my, you know, uh, my uh, kitchen dining room at this point in time. And she would say, you know, David, have you got a proper job yet? Are you still doing that NLP stuff? Um, <clears throat> I think you know the answer to that one. <laughs> but equally, I could go inside and find the part of me that's Jack Sparrow from the Pirates of the Caribbean, and he would respond in exactly the way that he would do if he was here. So the part of us that represents a person or a character or even um, uh, you know somebody who's, not, who's no longer around is from a HUNA point of view, the slide in the projector. So what that means is that when people are around you, they can be no better or worse than the slide in your projector. So they can be no better or worse than your internal representation of them. They can be no better or worse than the part of you that represents um, them, yeah? Now, one of the things that we, we, what we were talking about last week was very much about 
our projection onto other people, our projection onto um, events. And one of the events that we talked about um, last week was the event with, um, with Will Smith and Chris Rock uh, at the, uh, at the Global, Globe Awards and how even though it's the same people, it's the same event, everybody, p- people saw it on the, the, on the same TV, there's a whole series of different perceptions of the same event and the same people. Now, what I want to talk about um, this week is other, pro- other people's projections onto us. Yeah, other people's projections onto us. So, you know, I hear people saying things when they first start to learn about perceptions projection and they complain that other people are projecting things onto them. Um, it might be their husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, significant other, and they go, oh, you know, he or she's projecting this onto me. Or they go, uh, oh, there's this, this person at, uh, at work and they're projecting this onto me. Well, you know, with perceptionist projection, you can't use that get out of jail for free card. Here's the reason why. Your perception of what other people are projecting onto you is your projection. Yeah. So your perception of what other people are projecting onto you is your projection. So, you know, or other, and some, some people go, you know, well, they've got this opinion about me. Uh, uh, something that I, that I find quite amusing uh, quite often when I'm training is people ask, will ask me a question and say, David, what's your opinion on this? Um, and I just go, well, this entire training is my opinion. Uh, it can't be anything else, yeah, because it's all your opinion. It's all your perception. So <clears throat> your, your perception of other people's opinions about you is still you. It's still your projection. So therefore, you know, if your perception of other people's projections on you uh, isn't the way that you want it to be, then what you need to do is, again, to, uh, to look inside rather than outside and work out what the projection is. And as we, as we go later through the, the series, um, when we've really got, you know, this, the whole concept of perceptions projection down, we're then going to look at how do we go about changing our projections if with something that we don't actually um, like our perception of it. Because here, here's the thing. Um, all the time that you're pushing a problem away from you, you're also pushing away the solution. Yeah? Whenever you push the problem, your perception is a problem. Whenever you push the problem away from you, you're also pushing away the solution. As soon as you bring the problem home, if you like, and you go, okay, this is me, and you bring it to you, and you pull the problem inside, by pulling the problem inside, you will also bring the solution inside. But all the time that you're pushing the problem outside away from you, you'll never find the solution. Only by bringing the problem inside will you then discover the solution to the problem that you're perceiving. And and as I say, later on in the the series, we're gonna look at uh, how do we go about changing the slide in the projector so that then our perception of the outside world changes but what we've got a, a couple more sessions on uh, different levels of perceptions projection uh, and some more uh, homework if you like uh, each week which will then bring up the things that possibly uh, you might want to uh, change your projections and therefore your perceptions now I mentioned that um, when <clears throat> I was first introduced to um, this concept of perceptions projection um, which, you know, in that guise, perceptions projection was in 1993 um, by my, uh, as I say, my, my original NLP trainer, uh, mentor, and then a, a dear friend, uh, the late Dr. Tad James. 
And, um, you know, the whole idea of perceptions is projection that kind of like took the top of my head off. Um, but there was something else that he, that he said, which I want to talk about um, today. And it is a paradox. Now, the fact it's a paradox means that you'll never be able to get your head around it. OK, um, so and this was the this is the paradox that he, that he said. He said that every <clears throat> everything in the world is perfect and exactly as it should be. And you might want to change it. Yeah, so everything in the world, everything in the universe is in perfect order. It's exactly as it should be. And you might still want to change it. Now, here's a, this is quite a, a different way of thinking because the majority of people, when they think that they, that they need to change something, it's because they perceive something to be wrong or bad. And they go, that's wrong. That's bad. I need to change it. Yeah. Which for those of you from an NLP point of view, know that that's an away from rather than a towards. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whereas, and so by going, that's wrong, that's bad. I need to change it. We need to change it. Somebody needs to change it. We actually hold that thing that we perceive to be wrong or bad in that state in our universe. So let me just repeat that again. If you perceive something to be wrong, or you perceive something to be bad, and you therefore want to change it or, need, or feel that you need to change it, you actually hold it in its current state in your universe, as in you'll actually prevent it from changing. There was a, um, an example of this. Um, when I was teaching uh, HUNA, I was teaching a higher level HUNA class, um, and this would have been in the late 90s. And I was teaching a HUNA class at, um, at what we call uh, level four. And I was talking about this concept of uh, the universe is in perfect order. It's exactly as it should be, it's perfect and we might want to change it. And uh, one of the level four students put their hand up and they said, but uh, David, uh, a group of us get together every Sunday afternoon to meditate on healing the planet. And I, I, I said to them, so it's your fault then. <laughs> to which they went, what? I said, it's your fault then, the planet needs healing. See, <clears throat> if you think about it, if you get together every Sunday afternoon to meditate on healing the planet, you actually have to be projecting out onto the planet that it needs healing. And all the time that you will actually perceive the planet needs healing, you will always find something that needs healing. Yep. Whereas if you go, the universe is in perfect order, everything is exactly as it, as it should be. Um, and I want to change that thing, that then enables you to change it. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing that happens in, from a perceptions projection point of view, is this concept of we become what we fight. We become what we fight. And what that means is, you know, normally when somebody goes into fight mode to fight something, it's because they perceive this thing to be bad or to be wrong. And not only uh, because of perceptions projection, do we actually hold it in that current state. What we actually do is because whenever we point one finger out at somebody else, there's always three pointing back at us, then we become what we fight. Let me give you some two examples of this that we've seen um, over the last couple of years where people went into a fight mode and they actually became the very thing that they were fighting. So one of those examples was um, Black Lives Matter. Obviously Black Lives Matter was set up 
to fight racism. And so then the people who were following the Black Lives Matter crusade, for want of a better word, you know, I had um, friends that were, that were doing this on, on Facebook, and they were putting up posts saying, uh, be, to support Black Lives Matter, um, <clears throat> don't buy from shops that are owned and run by white people. Only buy from shops that are run by black people. Well, in my perception, that's racist. So isn't that the very thing? Haven't they become the very thing that they're actually fighting? Another example was the Me Too movement. Now, Me Too movement originally was set up to fight sexism. And, they, and then the Me Too movement ran a, a conference where they banned any male presenters and they banned any males from attending the conference. Well, in my perception, isn't that sexist? The very thing that actually they were established to fight. So we become what we fight, yeah? So again, it's around the way things are right now that is in perfect order. And there are these things that I want to change. Now, you know, one of the things I was, I was thinking about this, and this is what brought up uh, into my mind um, <clears throat> just earlier this week, was all of the things that we're seeing in the media um, about what's happening in the Ukraine. And, you know, a lot of people are going, that's wrong, that's bad, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And it reminded me of an experience that I had um, <clears throat> several years ago. Uh, I was running a, um, a workshop, I was running a training um, for um, veterans. And uh, these are veterans predominantly from um, the Falklands, from the conflict in Bosnia, and um, Gulf One. And, you know, they had a, a, a variety of um, symptomologies from anxiety disorders to post-traumatic stress disorder to depression, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And most of them had been experiencing those um, symptoms for around about 10 to 15 years that had, you know, some of the best treatment in the world, best psychiatrists, psychologists, et cetera, psychiatrists, psychotherapy. And obviously as a, as a fact that they're in the room with me, uh, none of those that actually enabled them to get the result they wanted. And there'd be about 30 to 40, predominantly male, predominantly um, uh, UK uh, army, British army. And I'm at the front of the room and I'm taking them through the content and I've got my coaching team at the back of the room. And I looked out at the coaching team at the back of the room. And when I looked at them, I went, hmm, obviously this is my perception. Some of the coaching assistants are feeling sorry for the delegates on the program. And so I went, okay, 15 minute break starts now. Uh, the person who was running the room for me when David, we've only just started. I said, I know, 15 minute break starts now, coaching assistants outside. And I took them out, the coaching assistants out, and I said, okay, I'm looking at you at the back of the room, and my perception is that some of you actually feel sorry for uh, some of our delegates. And some of the coaching assistants actually started to cry at that point in time. And they said, well, David, I was talking to them in the break, and what they'd experienced, they told me what they'd experienced, and blah, 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 it was awful, and I feel so sorry for them, whatever. And I said, listen, if you feel sorry for them, in your perception, through your projection, you'll hold them in the current state that they are currently in. And that's not what this program's about. What you need to do is to learn how to have empathy for the delegates, not sympathy for the delegates. I said, and if you don't do that, I'm not gonna let you back in the room because anybody who's in the room is feeling sorry for the guys in the room actually will prevent those people from getting that result. 
Yeah. So this is an important thing is, you know, when you look out at the world outside of you, then have empathy for people that are experiencing those kind of things uh, like we see in the, in the Ukraine rather than sympathy, because sympathy, what that does is in your universe, it keeps them on the effect side of the equation by being having empathy for those people that in your projection and your perception enables them to go to the cause side of the equation and do something about it, take action and change it. Okay. So just before we go, we're going to Q and A, um, I've got some tasking for you to do. Um, and I'll remind you again at the end of the session um, what the uh, what the tasking is. Um, so <clears throat> the tasking for this week is to look outside of you in the world at large, um, whether that's the world actually around you, um, whether it's the world via the TV or the world via the newspapers, etc. And a, a very interesting thing that I personally discovered from uh, doing um, those veteran programs for around about nine years um, was that when you actually were told from people who were there what was actually happening in the Falklands War, in the conflict in Bosnia, in the first conflict in the Gulf, and you compared it with what we see in the newspapers, and you compare it to what you see on Sky or whatever, uh, they bear absolutely no resemblance whatsoever. So the news on the TV is also somebody's perception of what's happening, yeah? So what I want you to do uh, for this week is where in, where in your world um, is the world not perfect? Where in the world, or in your, in your world, isn't perfect. And then, from a perceptions projection point of view, how is that you? So when you look out on the world, what's not perfect in the world? And how is that you? So now let's uh, open up to um, Q&A. Do you have some questions? Oh, what we got. Uh, Janelle, um, you mentioned that thinking is not enough as it is conscious. That was uh, something I mentioned last week in that uh, we project unconsciously and then we perceive um consciously so the projection comes from our unconscious mind our perception is our conscious mind so and what we talked about um last week was the concept of perceptions projection and the tasking if you like that we're going to do uh, in between each session the idea is to make your unconscious projections conscious that's what we're doing at the moment what is a good way to create positive projections if thinking is not enough? Um, <clears throat> so that's what we're going to be getting on to um, in a couple more sessions time, um, <clears throat> which is how do we go about changing our projections um, so that um, and we'll, we'll know, then know that we've successfully changed our projection when the thing that we perceived was not totally healed, whole, and magnificent, it changes in our perception. Then we know that we've successfully changed it. Um, Andrew Donovan, what happens when you learn the other person realized their own projection was wrong 10 minutes after you meet. <laughs> um, 
Well, Andrew, what that means is, is that um, you've projected that onto um, that person. And then in your perception, um, they appear to have changed their mind um, in your perception. Um, now, of course, when they walk away and they're not in your reality anymore, they might change their mind back. But, you know, it doesn't matter because they're not in your reality anymore. Um, Anil, um, if other people's opinion about me is my own projection on them, then isn't that, isn't it like standing between two parallel mirrors and seeing infinite images of ourselves? Yes, would be the, would be the simple answer to, uh, to that one. And it is a uh, infinite um, number of images of ourself, um, which is why, um, you know, I, sometimes with that, our conscious mind gets a little bit overwhelmed. Um, so obviously our conscious mind can't really comprehend the infinite. Um, the, the conscious mind is quite, um, is quite finite. Um, Balan. Um, okay. Do we project ourselves onto ourselves? <laughs> I.e., um, if I'm having a health issue, to what extent should I look at a projection is projection, perception is projection in this context. We've actually got a masterclass. Um, I can't remember which one it is. It's a bit further down in the, in the order. If you look at the original email uh, where we've got the, uh, the content mapped out, what we've got is we've got a whole session on our, um, our perception of our body is our projection. Yeah, and we're going to look at that in, in detail. Um, and yes, that would be that that is the crux of what we're going to look at there. Um, Nikhil, yes. So what you've got, what you just not a question, but it's a comment. What you resist persists. That that's another way of saying um, you know, you become what you fight. Uh, so yes, absolutely. If you resist it, it persists, it persists. If you push it outside of you then uh, it will remain outside of you as a problem and you'll never get the solution. So therefore, what you per perceive to be a problem persists until you go, okay, so how is this me and how do I change that? Um, <laughs> okay, so Diane. How does it stand that my ex-boyfriend used to say that I said something uh, that I know completely that I hadn't said, but he used to insist it was me that said it when in fact he projected it on to me? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, well, you projected that onto him. Um, which then gave you the perception that he would say you'd said something that you in actual fact knew that you hadn't from a, from an NLP point of view, we could explain that from a uh, deletion. I think everybody's had an experience where you absolutely knew that you told somebody something and they absolutely deny that you ever said it uh, because for whatever reason, from their filtering perspective, they deleted it. Yeah. Um, now, we've got a session um, later on in the series, which is specifically about perception is projection in um, your intimate primary relationships like husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, uh, and how that uh, works, because the, um, the projection in those kind of relationships um, is quite special um, and also what we're going to look at is why um, your projection on a person changes 
when you move from dating that person to being committed with that person. What you project onto them actually changes as soon as you go, I do, or you move in together or whatever. And it explains the reason why you hear so many people go, you know, he's not the person I thought I was marrying. Uh, <clears throat> well, he is. Uh, it's your projection that's changed. Yeah. Um, the, a, great, a great thing in relationships is that, um, um, therefore, in a relationship, everything is you. Um, so, therefore, uh, everything is your fault, uh, which makes uh, life significantly easier because when your significant other says this is your fault, you just go, I know. And um, <clears throat> Rachel B. So if I believe the education system is perfect and I hold it in that current state, then and only then can I change it. Yes. Yes, Rachel, that's, that's, that's absolutely correct. Because if you got a, um, a perception that either the education system was wrong or it was bad, or it was broken, um, then you would hold it in that state, no matter what you did um, to attempt to change it, as in it needs changing, uh, but then your projection is on it being broken. Yeah. So you go, okay, where the education system is at this point in time is perfect. It's absolutely where it's meant to be. And now I'm going to change that bit. Um, so yes, that's uh, that's good questions, guys. Oh, there's more. Uh... <laughs> um, is that Kaza? Yeah. Should, Kaza, uh, should we get rid of people that project negative things on us? <laughs> well, like hiring your friends from Brazil. Um, <laughs> well, you know, here's, here's an interesting thing, you know, because those people that we perceive are projecting negative things on us actually are the very people that provide us with the greatest opportunity for personal transformation. Um, you know, because I hear a lot of people go, I don't watch the news because I don't want that in my universe. Well, that doesn't work, really, um, because what you're doing is you're going, I don't want to watch the news because what's on the news is bad or wrong. Yeah. Whereas in actual fact, you watch the news and you go, OK, that's me. Where, where um, in my perception of that, um, am I not projecting what I want and how? Can I change it? So actually watching the news, reading the newspapers. Um, and, you know, I, I quite often tell a joke when I'm training. I say, you know, I, I read the Daily Mail every day because I really want to know what's happening in the world. Um, but, you know, really reading the Daily Mail, um, it, it, for one thing, it's the most widely read newspaper in the world. The DailyMail.co.uk has a, a just under 100 million unique visitors per day. Uh, so I'll give you an idea. Reading the Daily Mail gives you a good idea as to what the majority of people are actually thinking about the world. Um, but equally, that brings you into this thing as far as like, okay, um, where is my perception of that, that it's, that it's wrong, broken, et cetera? And where, where is that me? And therefore, it gives uh, me a, a, an experience of being able to um, transform myself. Um, okay, Erie, can you give an example of empathy versus sympathy? Yeah. So, um, well, let me, let's, let's go back to um, that example uh, that I gave of the veterans program. So sympathy, uh, which is what I perceived, obviously, um, in the, the coaching assistants in the back of the room, uh, which, of course, is my projection. 
Um, so not only do I have a chat with them, I've also got to have a bit of a chat with myself um, to change my projection on that. And they felt sorry for um, the, the delegates there. Um, they believed that what they'd experienced um, was bad, was wrong, that nobody should go through that sort of thing, and they felt sorry for them. And whilst you feel sorry for someone, uh, you'll actually hold them in that particular um, that particular state in your world, in your universe. Empathy is, you know, is um, recognizing what the person has experienced, recognized the state that they're in right now. Um, you know, recognizing also that, you know, where they are right now is absolutely perfect. Um, and um, with, I guess, um, a feeling of um, love towards them, um, holding them in your mind um, where they want to be rather than where they are now. Yeah, so that's so you, you feel for them, um, but you're feeling um, a, a love for them where they are right now, and then holding in your projection um, them being totally healed, whole, and magnificent, which then allows for them to become totally healed, whole, and magnificent in your perception. Yeah, uh, good question, Yuri. Um, Liz. Okay, so Liz says, why would you want to change anything if everything is perfect and healed? Um, if in your perception everything is perfect and healed, uh, then you don't need to change anything. Um, then, you know, you're, you're done. You've become enlightened and you can um, move along. <laughs> um, Perception is projection. Is that you have the concept or awareness of the thing or projection, or that's it's a part of you trait in your unconscious? In other words, are you aware of it, or or are you or, or are you it? Yes. Um, <clears throat> So, um, yes. So, you know, if you think about it, in the Taoist tradition, which I talked about um, last week, the, the way they put perception as projection is as in the microcosm, so the macrocosm. And the, the, they talk about the microcosmic orbit and the macrocosmic orbit. The microcosmic orbit is inside of you or what appears to be inside of you, the macrocosmic orbit is outside of you. And they say, as in the microcosm, so the macrocosm. Because in actual fact, in reality, they're not separate, they're the same. And I mentioned, you know, we have an experience of that. We have an experience that, you know, when we fall asleep at night, the macrocosmic universe disappears uh, and then we wake up in the morning and it reappears but then you know how many of you here have had a dream that was so vivid that whilst you were having that dream you didn't realize it was a dream until you woke up yeah so all that means is that none of you here on this zoom call can give me any empirical evidence to say that in a moment, you're not gonna wake up and find that you haven't come to the real world NLP and the HUNA masterclass yet, and that this was all a dream. 
the only way that you would know that this is a dream is that the dream presenter on the Zoom session will be just talking weird shit. That's how you know this is a dream. Um, Rene, how does your career job affect your perception? For instance, as an attorney, I perceive people differently to most others do to critical thinking training. Yeah, so uh, Rene, good, very good question. Again, what we've got is a session in the next few weeks where we'll look at perceptions, projections, specifically in our business and career. And also, it's just interesting that you said uh, attorney, because I did have a question uh, which actually came in by email um, over the week um, about how do people like judges, um, barristers, et cetera, deal with um, you know, people doing wrong or bad things. And um, uh, we're actually going to talk specifically about that in the masterclass next week. Um, as, as to how that um, how it works. I've got one question which I'm going to read to you. Okay, let me, I've got one more here. Uh, Michael Devine, is it therefore possible to change the outside world by changing internally? Uh, yes, Michael, it is. And uh, in a few more uh, sessions, we're actually going to talk about some specific tools and techniques for doing that. Uh, both from an NLP point of view, from a timeline therapy point of view, and also from an Hawaiian Huna point of view. So Penelope, is it just as bad to regard something as praiseworthy as to regard it as bad? Um, well, you know, if you perceived something as being praiseworthy, that's because you believe that you are praiseworthy. Um, you know, at the end of our practitioner training, particularly, um, I have the, all of the, the delegates look around the room and look at their fellow delegates, the people that have been spending the the last seven days with. And I say to them, do the people in the room on the Friday evening look different than when they arrived on um, Saturday morning? And they look around, they go, wow, yeah, they do look different. And I say, well, you know, and then some, some people go like, well, wow, she really transformed and He's, he'd learned so much, and I wish I'd transformed that much. I wish I'd learned that much. And then I turn around behind me, because on the wall behind me, I've got a flip chart that says perceptions projection, uh, which is, you know, if you, if you hadn't transformed as much as the people in the room that you perceive have transformed, or you hadn't learned as much as you perceived of the people that learned, then you, you wouldn't be able to see it in other people. Um, so, you know, the ultimate goal here really is to get ourselves to the point where everybody and everything in our perception is totally healed, whole, and magnificent. That's the, that's where we're, that's where we're heading. Is that the question or is it? Yeah. So the question is. What I'm getting from your teachings is that everything is perfect in the sense that it's a perfect reflection of where I am at the moment, and that allowing myself to own my projections lets me discover what within myself that is being perfectly reflected that I would like to change so that future projections are more pleasurable, desirable, and joyful. I never need concern myself about anyone outside of myself because I can only change me. What am I missing? Um, I don't, Daniela. Daniela, um, I've just heard your question. I don't know if the rest of you heard that. Uh, I, I, it was a long question, so I can't repeat it. <laughs> um, uh, I don't think you're missing anything, Daniela. Um, th that, that is it. Um, it's about us letting go of judgment 
Um, Because, you know, if you perceive that certain things are good, then you also create in your universe that there must be things that are bad. If you perceive there are certain things that are right, then you also presuppose in your universe the existence of things that are wrong. And that will come out in your um, projections and therefore your perception. So yes, what you're what you're doing is, uh, you know, and this is this is an interesting one. When I first started studying Huna um, in 1993, um, one of the concepts was that the Kahuna uh, in ancient Hawaii, um, if they did healing work with a client, then you know the client would come and see them. And they'd ask questions of the client, I guess what we would call from an NLP point of view, a detailed personal history. So they knew exactly <clears throat> where the client was at this particular point in time. And then it asked, where did the client want to be? Then they would send the client away. And they would then heal up the part of them that was the client. So then the part of them was in their perception exactly where the client wanted to be. And then they look outside of themselves. And if their perception of the client was, was, uh, was the same as that, then um, the healing was complete. So they actually um, healed themselves to have the client um, heal up. This is, this is an interesting thing. I'm gonna leave you with this, this concept. So I know we've, we've run over half an hour, which I'm doing pretty well at doing that every, uh, every week so far. Um, and um, so it, here, here's an idea. For those of you that do uh, therapy or coaching or, or the, any of those kind of, kind of things, then um, when a client comes to see you, what, they, what the client does is they show you where to heal up yourself. And then by doing the processes with the client, you're actually healing that, that up inside of you. And you know when you've successfully healed it up inside of you because the problem disappears in the client. And then they pay you. What a concept. Um, you get paid for people to show up, show you where to heal, heal yourself up. And you do, and you know you've successfully done that when the problem disappears in the client, and then they pay you for it. <laughs> so I guess when, you, when there's nothing more for you to heal up, you won't have any clients anymore. Um, you won't care because you'll be enlightened. Um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's essentially what... And then, you know, sometimes... Um, I, this is an experience. Like, I do a lot of breakthrough sessions. I do a lot of, a lot of therapy and, and stuff. And I sometimes get to the point where I go, I really don't want to see anybody with that problem again. I really need to get this dealt with once and for all. And then I heal it up inside of me and clients with that presenting problem don't appear anymore. Yep. I've still got plenty of clients, which is an indication that I've got lots of work to do. Yeah. So, um, Give me a thumbs up if that was useful this week. Great stuff. Fantastic. Uh, remember the tasking for this week. Uh, where in your world isn't perfect? And how is that you? Uh, next week in the master class, we're going to take um, perceptions projection to a whole other level. Uh, where we're going to look at the fact that perception is projection, um, does not work in a Newtonian way, but a quantum way. So perception is projection isn't linear, which is why sometimes people have a problem getting their head around how they are projecting a certain thing onto a certain person. We're going to look at that um, in detail next week. Yeah. So uh, thanks for um, for joining for joining us um, this evening or this morning or wherever it, uh, you may be in the world. 
Um, we've also, as a result of getting so much feedback and so many registrations on Facebook, we've set up a community, um, the, the real world NLP and HUNA community. Um, uh, and we've already got around about 200 members in that group. So if you haven't joined that yet, please join it. Um, and once we get some, some more people in it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, put a post in there uh, to really ask you guys what it is that you want to be able to gain from being a member of that community. Because uh, I, I very much want it to be driven by the members of that community rather than being driven by, uh, by us and by me. So if you haven't joined that yet, uh, you'll see, I put a post up on my Facebook wall. Um, so um, real world NLP and the HUNA community, um, join that so that we can uh, hang out, um, share our, th our thinkings and uh, our learnings in a, um, uh, a supportive and, um, uh, and loving, acceptable, accepting uh, environment, okay? So uh, great to see you all, and I will see you again as I said last, uh, last week, same bat time, same bat channel um, on Zoom and uh, at 7 p.m. British summertime on Wednesday. See you guys.